Hello and welcome to the next and then the last session for our polar coordinate. Huh. The last session I'll do with the case two, where we have to convert the entire problem to a polar coordinate. So I have on my slide evaluating a double integral by converting from rectangular to polar coordinate. Yeah. I've already told you or discussed when to use a polar coordinate. <laughs> so let's look at the example here. Um, the question is just telling us to convert, but assuming it does not tell us to do this conversion, what will you do? It just says evaluate negative one to one, evaluate zero to that. It just says solve this guy here. Yeah. What are you looking out for? You realize that with our remarks, there's one guy here, one tiny point here. So, hey, I have to go to polar, but this is a half circle. And then the radius will be one. It will be zero to one, because the radius is to A. If I have A minus S squared, radius is zero to A. And so I will be zero to what, one. And what do I get for my theta? Obviously, it becomes 0 to pi because it is half. Another thing I will look out for, as you mean I don't even see this, I have some combinations of s squared plus y squared in my integrand. So again, I move to polar, and I know this gives me r squared. It implies that my d, y dx will simply becomes r d r d theta. Hmm. Just this two is enough for me to compute my, or solve my problem. So let's do that. And so it would move from, but first, first, let's do this. You realize that your, let me give the question here, this is the x. You realize that your x is the outer integral, which is negative one to one. And then your y is the inner integral, which is zero to whatever guy you had there. And so with this, our r would be zero to one. And then our theta would be zero to, this is half of a circle, so pi. So this is like having, Oh, there's not a full circle. It's like having this zero to one, negative one here. And this is this one minus S squared. Okay. So this is what we have. And so it becomes zero to pi, zero to one, our integrand, which is S squared plus Y squared, three on two, r d r d theta. I'm doing a substitution. And so I get zero to pi to one, r squared, three over two times r. Simplify further. I'm going to use indices here. My indices is the same as r two times that times r to the power one. This simply becomes r to the power four because I get r three times r one. So my integrand becomes r to the power four. Simply says that instead of dying on solving this whole problem here, <laughs> which is true, would have had difficulties if we had moved on in that rectangular domain. He says I can solve it in a polar as it is converted to zero to one out to the power four d r d theta. Isn't it so obvious that it will be simpler to solve in a polar? It is. And so that's how you convert. If it's not given, 
It is not stated. The keywords like circles and radius are not stated in the problem. You should be able to convert using these two techniques. This and that. The second example. So if you solve it, you get pi on five. The second example, okay, so this is just evaluates that. We are evaluating negative one to one. I believe by now you would have guessed what to do. And so I don't need to worry myself. I know because of this, I'm going to get zero to pi because it's half. And this, I know I'm going to get zero to one. The integrand s squared will be r squared cos squared theta. Why? Because x is equal to r cos theta, and hence s squared will give me r squared cos squared theta. So then the substitution straightforward. And then this two, I know it is r squared, all squared now. And this again is going to be r d r um, theta. We expand. We expand. We are going to get this gives me four and this gives me two. So R to the power six. We expand further. I get R to the power seven. Or square theta, the R the theta. So instead of solving it in the original problem, I can reduce it this way. And so the answer is pi on 16. Now there's a teaser here as the last example on our case two. A teaser. We've already seen this question, but it says evaluate in both rectangular and polar. Ah. <laughs> it means that by all means, at all costs, solving a rectangular domain, you can get an answer, but then it would it would it would mean that you have to be cautious with your simplification and your algebra. So let's look at the polar aspect of it. So my last there's a teaser. It wants me to evaluate this. This was from our motivation. So I'll take my time for this one. I know that from the problem, my X is the outer, which is negative two to two. My Y is the inner which is some negative square root to a positive square root. I know this will give me a full circle. And so my theta will be zero to two pi. And hence my r will be zero to what, two from the x. And so the integral becomes, let me look at my, so there's a first second, my, my dA or dy dx will simply becomes r d r d theta. So I'm labeling that equation one, equation two, equation three, our expressions. Now the fourth one will be my integrand. I have s squared plus y squared plus three. This simply becomes r squared because I know s squared plus r, y squared is r squared plus three. Equation four, who we are done. We have to substitute all this. We will substitute just equation two through to four into the main guy. So I'll call it star. My star is not what, okay. And that is my star. And so this simply becomes zero to two pi. Okay. 
zero to two. R squared plus three. R D R D theta. And hence I get R to the power three plus three R D R D theta. I have simplified my question. It looks so scary at first to compute, but with the help of a polar or knowing that my region is a circle, I'm able to convert it to a polar coordinate. And so that brings us to the end of the case too. In summary, or in conclusion, let me take a very clean sheet. So conclusion. If you can draw your region and then it gives you a circle, use polar coordinates. The polar coordinates has a function r theta, where r moves from zero to a point in x and y. Your theta moves from zero to two pi. It can't go beyond two pi. It can be within two pi. And then if you're in Cartesian, you want to move to polar, this is what you do. So your x becomes r cos theta, your y becomes r sine theta, and then your s squared plus y squared becomes r squared. Mathematically, the square root of s squared plus y squared should give you r. That is what we have. And it's, it also goes, I had to say that if I have an integral of zero to some a minus s square, I should know that I have a half circle. And hence my theta would be zero to pi. If I have it as a negative part to zero, I know I still have the other half, which is still to pi zero to pi. But if I have it as the negative part of it to the positive part of it, I get a full circle. And so my theta will run from zero to two pi. In the same way, if I have an integral with the combinations as this, plus any other terms, I know how to use polar because I can convert these ones. And so that is the end of polar coordinates in double integrals. I hope all the sessions have been helpful. And in our next meeting, we'll look at surface area, which is still application of a double integral. Enjoy the sessions.